today I came across this uh, very cool kata called Mars Rover kata. And I would like to do this kata using a uh, classicist TDD, but coming from outside. So kind of like outside in classicist, if that makes sense. So let's check the rules. Uh, let's see. So basically what we need to do here, uh, develop an API that moves a rover around on a grid. And you are given a, the initial starting point, 00n of a rover. 00, 0 are the x and y coordinates of a grid of 10 by 10. n is a direction it is facing, so north, south, uh, east and west. L and R allow the rover to rotate left and right. M allows the rover to move one point in the current direction. Okay. So the rover receives a char array, I believe that is kind of a string of commands like R, M, M, L, M, and returns the finishing point after the moves. Oh, I see. So it receives a string. So the first letter is R, so it will move right. Oh, it will turn right, and then it will move and move twice to the right and then left. So that face north again and it moves up. I see. So the rover wraps around if it reaches the end of the grid. Okay, so I think that there's four points so from top to bottom, left to right, and so on. The grid may have obstacles. If a given sequence of commands encounters an obstacle, the rover moves up to the last possible point and reports the obstacle. Okay, so from what I understood, we pass a string with commands and the only commands acceptable are uh, L and R, so to move left and right, and M, that is to move forward. And then the result is the position so basically the coordinates that is x and y and uh, the direction that is facing. Okay, sounds kind of straightforward. All right, let's see if we can, okay, let's start creating a class. And here I'm gonna do that in Java. So a rover should, so let me say, okay, so if I go back to the, re the requirements, what I need to do here, so it is always facing, where is it? Okay, it's always facing zero, zero north. And so I think that I'm gonna start with rotating to the right. So let's see, a rover should, a rover should rotate right. And here, what I'm going to do is assert that rover dot execute. And I think that I could do R. And then the result, if I was 0, 0, I would still be 0, 0. But if I was facing north and I need to rotate right, I'll be east. So this is kind of the test that I want probably to do. So if that is the case, so no, I don't want that. Let me just create uh, this one. Let me import this one. And let's create this rover class in here. So let's create a local variable for now. I'm gonna call it rover. And let's say, I don't know, new rover. That sounds fair. Let's create this class. So let's move that to the other side. Oops, not you. Uh, let's make it bigger. So then what we can do, create this method in there. I would expect a string. These would be commands. Yeah, this is kind of all this. So I think this is kind of what I want. So let's see if I can run this. Uh, rover should. Okay, is it running? Yeah. 
Okay, so it blows up. That's fine. That's what I was expecting. So let's make it pass. So if I run that, it should pass. Okay, so that is first test done. So next, what we are going to do is I'm going to continue the, um, the rotation right. Well, what I could do, because that's going to get boring. So what I'm going to do, let me just make a parameter, parameterized test in here. So I'm going to move these here. So... Cool. So then I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, use the uh, JUnit params run with. Uh, what is it? Param. JUnit params. No, uh, what is it called? JUnit params runner. And. What we're gonna do here is run pointers. I think that is this one. And what I'm gonna do is I think that I'm, what I'm gonna do here. I'll put um, R and then the position that I expect is this. Here will be a string commands and then a string position. So basically, if I say so, if you execute these commands, then the result is this position. So if I do that, this should work. Okay, that works, cool. So now I have parameterized tests. So what I'll do now is create and rotate twice. So if I rotate twice, now I need to be facing south, right? So that is the idea. So let's see. Cool, so one of the tests is failing. So of course, so now I need to fix this. Okay, so one of the things that I want to do is to, it's said in the spec that the direction that I'm facing should be north. So what I want to do is if, Uh, direction equals north, then direction equals east, and here I want to say plus direction. So this probably Oh, what I can do is iterate, so for each, no, let's say, I do iter, commands, uh, char, uh, how do I get the, array and that is that so what we can do is now I'm going to iterate over this and I can even do this if direction equals east then direction equals south
Right. So basically, what I'm doing is I'm iterating through the shards. I get the first R directions equals N is E. So that change. Oh, that is dodgy. That is dodgy. Okay, so let's try to make this a little bit better because this is too shit, right? Okay, what we can do, we can move, we can create a method. So, for example, if we say if uh, C equals uh, So what we can do is we say direction equals move with rotates right. Oh, let me put the Java style. So if we do that, then we can move these things out. So then what we can do, we can just say if an S else. So basically what we can do if it's north, we return east. Else if um, if it's east then we return else. In fact, in this case, just do that, right? So if we do that, would that work? Okay, so it does. So now what we can do, we can start, we can keep testing this. So let's say, for example, if we rotate again, then from south we go west. Okay. And so here what we would do is else if direction equals uh, east and then south else return west cool so that works and then the last one Let me go back to north. All right, so right. Can I do this? Yeah. So basically, if this is south, we turn west. Otherwise, we turn north. Cool, I think so I'm done with rotating uh, right and I can now move on to rotate left. Now let's try to rotate left. Let's do some, oops, it's not copy and paste, right? So copy and paste is fine. So we want to go left and if we start north, as soon as we go left, we go west. Yeah, so this will be left. So let's see what's happened. Well, what happens? Should fail, right? And it does fail. Okay, cool, expected. So basically here, what we need to do, 
Um, so if char if c equals right, uh, then this. If however if c equals left, what we want is direction equals rotate left. Uh, that's what what we want. So here we are going to do a similar thing. Uh, so if it calls rotate left, we just return west for now. And that should be enough. Let me just move this down a bit. Fine. Okay, so now we can continue. So let we let's turn left twice. If I turn left twice, I should go south. Let's see if it fail. Cool. So basically what we need to do is here if direction equals north then uh, what do I do? and just return north uh, or just return west otherwise return uh, south so that should pass Cool, so next one, so the same. Let's turn left two, uh, three times now, and then we should be east. Okay, so I really hate this. I think what I've done in the rotate right. So what if I just stop with this? And let's say, what if I just do this? Because it's just too shit, right? But let, let's keep it like that for now. So, so if, if direction is west, return south. Otherwise, return east, that should work. And last test. So if we if we rotate four times to the left, it should be back to north. And so if I am south, then it should be east. Otherwise, east north. Okay, so then I'll probably do the same here. Just this is just two sheet. So this, is this. This, is this. Should work. Okay. I think that now what we could do, we could do some refactoring here because, like, all these rotation left and right probably could be done a little bit better, maybe in a different class as well. So what? What I'm keen to explore is. What if we had a enum called direction and then in there we had a direction called north which has this as value and then on the left of north we have west 
and the right of north we have east so then for let's say north let's go east so the value of east is e to the left i have north and to the right i have south and then i have south where the value is s to the left i have east to the right i have west and i have west that uh, this is the value so right no that is south left is south and right is north so not sure if i did anything stupid so this will be value this will be the left and this will be the right so so now i have a data structure that has its own value and left and right so what i'm gonna do with this i think that's what i could do i could do something like let's say for example if i have a direction here Uh, let's call it E direction for now because there's an E noun for now. Uh, I don't want to destroy things too much. I'm just exploring now. I don't I don't even know if I if I want this. So in this case, what I want is E direction should be E direction dot right. So I want a method there that returns me a new direction so let's say if i create a method right in here so what i want to do is enter values i want to iterate of all my enums so the direction if the direction i need to find the current direction I do that so if the direction dot value is equals leaves of value so if the right then what I want to do is to say direction dot right no that's not what I want if direction dot right is equals this value is time direction No, no, I think that is not what I want. So I'll return now for now. I think that what I want is if the direction value is equal to right. I think this is what I want. So, so basically what I'm trying to do here is I have a direction. I want to know the right side. So I take, I take the enum, I iterate over all these enums, right? So I get the first one and say, hey, are you my right? So if the enum that I find is equals, so if the value is equals to the one that is my right, I return that, that enum. So that I'm returning the enum to the right. So then otherwise I return null. So I think that if I do that, should be okay. And in this case, So what I will do, I will actually say, I will comment this one out. 
and I'll say direction right dot value because these probably should remain should be the same as I had before no it's not I know I think that I know what I'm doing wrong uh, is first I, I do this I save it in here and then I say direction equals e direction dot value okay so so now that's better because I'm trying to keep compatibility without breaking everything but this way the rotate right I don't need it anymore so this can die and then this should work right fine so I should be able to do the same for let's create let's put these like that let's create a method right, uh, value instead okay and now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the same for left so basically what I want to do is here I want to do left and then I would say e direction dot value. So would that work? So let's create the left method. So the left, left method would be very similar to this one. But inside here, I'm going to compare with the left. So would that work? It does, cool. So basically what I'm trying to do here is let's move the left here. I think that I can probably move that as a variable and then extract that as a method so how can I call this uh, direction to the okay so basically what we can do is call direct and I can inline this now So direction to the right, this one can move down, move down, the direction to the left was also done. So then what we have is like a method called direct, right, direction to the right, direction to the left, value, and that's the method that does all the magic. Uh, this is not, this is direction to... The, how can I call this? Let's do the next direction. Oh, it's a shit name. That's a shit name. I don't. I don't have a better name right now. Maybe I don't know. This was value, so maybe direction matching value. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Okay, so the cool thing is that let's see if it's all green. Okay, so now it means that these rotate left can die. 
and I don't need all this nonsense here anymore. So I can probably do, I can remove this, I can remove this, and here I can do either direction dot value. So this dies as well. So let's run. Yeah, so I can rename this e directions to sheet as well. Let's call it just direction. Okay, that's pretty cool. So now what I can do, I can move this to its own class. So, yeah, put it, yeah. So basically what I have now is the direction on its own class and the rover, tiny and tidy. Okay, that sounds pretty cool. I actually should commit all of this. Okay, cool. Let's see where we are now. Uh, so the rover can uh, rotate left and right. So you are given, so it says here, develop an API that moves the rover around the grid. You are given the initial start point at 0, 0, n. So 0, 0 are x and y coordinates of a grid. 10 by 10. Okay, I don't have the notion of a grid yet. The grid has the size of 10 by 10. So next, we need to start moving the rover around. M allows the rover to move one point in the current direction. Okay. Okay. I need to figure out where, where I'm gonna put this behavior. Now, let's write another test in here to move up. Let's start simple. Um, so the rover should move up. So if I say move and I start at 0, 0, n, I think that what I would expect back is y to be 1. So if I, if 0, 0 is at the bottom, I'm facing north, so I'm looking up, and I say m, I should move the y ax, axis to, to 1. Okay, so that should be it. I have no idea how I'm going to evolve this. So I think one thing I could do straight away is to start breaking this apart. Um, plus this, plus this, plus this. So this is looking like uh, y. This is looking like x. Let's create this field. This will be a neat. This will be zero. The other one will be another field. To be zero. Okay. okay. Cool. So. So now, of course, it's not moving up. So I think that what I can do here is if c equals m, then, oh, I see. The problem is, if I want to move, 
if I want to have a single method that can move in many different directions, can move, can basically change x and y, I cannot have x and y separate. So what I could have, I could have a coordinate. 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 That says move. Something like that. And coordinate. So I could have a coordinate, coordinate, new coordinate, zero, zero. And in this case, then I could have. Uh, Coordinate of the x and coordinate x y. I think that if I did that, then I keep the the concept of x and y together in a single class. So let's create this coordinate class. So let's create this x and y let's create let's create these attributes so it should be public so let me change public so i need the methods to return so so it should be public uh int x return x y return y so now I have a move method to do something so the move method what it can do is if say if direction equals north so if direction is north then y plus equal one. So this y plus equal one, I can create local variable from here. So I can say int y equals zero. And then I can say return new coordinate of coordinate of x and this y. So if I do this, okay, so that's a bit of shit code, but uh, that's okay. So what if I now try to move uh, like do three moves so this should be three okay so this is still returning one So this is instead of three. So basically, when I iterate, so I say move. Ah, move is setting this to zero. So what we can do is coordinate as x. I can initialize that like that. I Cool. Okay, so now I know that I can move up as many as as many positions as I want. So next, what we, we can do, we can make it rock uh, from top to bottom. Let's see if we can. Uh, so 
So basically what I'm trying to say is should uh, the rover should wrap from top to bottom when moving north. Okay. So basically what I want to do is if I do that, if I move 10 times, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, I should be back to zero. This is, this should be the case. So as soon as it gets to 10, it's back to zero. So cool, so I have my failing test that is, I'm expecting zero is getting 10. So what if I do one plus one module 10 is back to work. Awesome. So this is a constant. This is max height. Okay, so if I try to run another test, so instead of 10, I do 15. So this should be 5 now. Okay, cool, awesome. So that works fine. Now we need to move, I think I'm gonna move east, move right, basically. So just, let me get this one. Basically, what I want to do is to move right and uh, what I want, I will move right first. So I'll, I'll rotate right and then move one. So this should do this and now I'm facing east as well. Okay, cool. So the direction is correct. So basically what I need to do here is the direction, which is east. Uh, then I need to increment x. Oops. So basically what I would need is something similar to this. Right. Let's move that up. Okay. And then here I will just have X. Cool. So I believe that I can do the same now. I can move like I don't know five times, and that would be five here. Awesome, cool. So what we can do now is a new task that actually wraps. So basically what I want to do is wrap from, um, right to left when moving east so I think here's the same I will instead of moving 5 I will move 10 
and that would to lead me to to zero zero again. So basically, I rotate right. So I'm facing east. Move ten times. I should drop from right to left. That's the idea. Okay. So it doesn't do that. So I think here will be exactly the same solution. Uh, plus one. Uh, module max height width. So this one will also be 10. And those constants, yeah, that's when you drive it. So if I do that now, it should work. Awesome. So that means that I probably can move another 15. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that will be 5 in here, and that should work as well. Cool. All right. What I could do now is to move west or move left. So let me just get this one. Uh, let's move that down. Okay, so basically this will be move left. So to move left, first of all, I'm gonna move turn, I'm gonna rotate left. Then I will expect this one to be nine and I will be facing west. So basically, I'm zero, zero, I rotate left. That means I'm facing west. I'm zero as soon as I move one, I'm at nine. So that's what I would expect. Okay. So, so that's failing. So basically what I would do here is hit direction equals west, then x is 9. That should be enough. Yeah, it is. So now let's do if I move five times one, two, three, four, five. So basically, I would say I would expect five, right? So that's kind of so that is nine, eight, seven, six, five. Okay, so basically, what I will want to do is if x equals 0, it turns 9. Otherwise, x minus 1. Cool. So I think I'll do a slightly different this. So while x is greater than 0, returns um, x minus 1. Otherwise, I would do max with it minus 1. That makes more sense. Cool. Awesome. So, So that is fine. Uh, now I'm going to do move south. So
So basically what I will do, I will do left left. So now I'm facing south. And I will also move one so that I should be nine. Uh, in fact, like less with these as well. So left left and that would be south. However, this won't. So basically what I'm doing is I'm zero zero. I'm moving so left left makes me face south. I move one, I go to nine. And then if I move five, I go to five. So basically what I want to do, this will be nine, this will be five. But this will be the same implementation as the other one, right? Okay, so basically, uh, what we are doing here is, so if I'm facing south, then and y is greater than zero, so then it's y minus one, otherwise is max height minus one. That should fix both my tests. Well, not one of them. So moving south. It's changing. So if I'm moving south, the Y is the one that needs to change. So is was this one. Oh, of course. Ah, copy and paste. Copy and paste. Right. Cool. Okay. Now I'm now I'm done with the movements. I think. So now I wonder because I, I don't want this move method to be here. I would like to have a grid. I think that these things like max height, max width, doesn't belong. They don't belong here to the rover class. This method move doesn't belong here. I mean, like similar. To, I want to to move this out. I wonder if I had a grid, how that would look like. So I'm not entirely sure, but like I'll need to experiment. So public class grid. So let's assume that these constants here. Are actually grid constants from the grid. Let's assume that we would have a method that is similar to this one in here. But that would be public. So I think that I would I want something like next coordinate. For coordinate and direction. So if I had that, then this coordinate is this. This direction is this. So if I had that, and instead of this move, if I had something like, uh, I don't know, new grid dot coordinate and direction, would that actually work? It would. Okay, so that's very interesting because then. In theory, I don't need this method anymore. All right, so 
if I move grid, so what if I, can I transform this into field? I can. That's pretty cool. So would I be able to move this with some class? Yeah, cool. So we're going to Republic. Into Republic. So now that grid is in its own class, now it's still green. Yeah, so in this case, I don't need these anymore. Yeah, would I be able to move that to the constructor? Okay, so if I had that. Move this. No, like that. In the constructor. Could I get away with this? Right, so. Basically, my test for the rover, the only thing I need to do is this. So, in theory, everything should work. Awesome. Okay, so, so now this is, is better. Uh, I think that I prefer this. I'm not sure. So cool. So at least, so now I have a rover. It has a grid. So directions, I just ask directions to rotate right and left. To move, I ask the grid for the next coordinate for the, my current coordinate and the direction. And that gives me the next coordinate in the grid. The grid itself knows its max height and max width, knows how to calculate the next coordinate. Uh, coordinate. Coordinate is just a dummy uh, X and Y thing. And the direction is the whole enum. Okay, so that, that sounds quite interesting. So where, where are we now? So I think that we've done almost everything. So the rover receives a char array command. Yeah, so, so that is done. The rover wraps around if it reaches the end of the grid. Yeah, this is done. The grid may have obstacles. Ooh, I see. If a given sequence of commands encounters an obstacle, the rover moves up to the last possible point and reports the obstacle. Oh, we need a, a no from obstacles. Oh, I see. Ooh. Okay. So obstacles. So so when there is an obstacle and we are we are trying to move around. So if we find an obstacle, then we stay at the same. We stay at the same position or the last position before the obstacle, and we put a no in front of it. Okay, we need to figure out now how we're going to do that. So how can we test this? So, how can I test this? I wonder. So, uh, stop at obstacle. So the rover should stop at obstacle. So let's assume. So the rover starts with zero zero north. So let's assume that we want to move 
three spaces or four spaces. But there is an obstacle on, on the, the fourth cell or fourth. So this what I think what I'm trying to say is like if I want to move, there is an obstacle at zero four. So I'm zero zero, I want to move four up. So that should be north, right? So I'm facing north. I send a command to move uh, to move four up, but there is a, an obstacle of zero four, which means that I can go up to zero three and then stay at stay at zero three. So, but for that I need to create so. I need a rover here, and this grid, I want a special grid. What I would like to do is to have a grid, a grid, to have a grid with obstacles. So, for example, I think that what I want to do is something like, what is it? Arrays as list. And I would like a coordinate. It's not Scala. So zero four as an obstacle. I think this is kind of the thing that I would like to have. Uh, no, that, that doesn't matter. So this is kind of the thing that I wanted to have. So this one here would be obstacles. I could even create, not to break the world, I could even create a constructor as a default constructor. So I could have A list of obstacles, and this will be uh, connections and list. So, so a list, so a grid starts with no obstacles, but I can also pass obstacles to the constructor of the the grid. So basically, now. What I can do here. So I will call it, uh, let's say, obstacle, just to make it clear. Yeah. So there's an obstacle on zero four. I don't even need, no, that's fine, that's fine. So if I do this, so I have a, a, an obstacle at zero four. I ask the rover to go to zero four, but it finds an obstacle at zero four, so it stops at zero three. So that's what I want. Okay. Okay, so the test is right. So I think that I could do here. So here he's trying to get the next coordinate. But so as soon as I get the new coordinate, so what if I don't, what if I just do this, put in a variable, new coordinate, and then what we can do is, what if I did, um, return obstacles contains, if the obstacles, if, the the new coordinate is an obstacle 
then so then we turn the coordinate otherwise we turn the new coordinate so basically what I'm trying to do here is First, I create the new coordinate. So I receive the coordinate a direction. Then I create the new next coordinate according to the direction. And then I ask, is this new coordinate an obstacle? If the new coordinate is an obstacle, then we turn the old coordinate. Otherwise, we turn the new coordinate. That's the thing. That's what I'm trying to do. Would that work? No, not quite. Okay, I need to think a little bit about this. I think I know what it is. Is a coordinate doesn't have equals in hash code because that's Java, of course. So let's implement equals. Unless you get hash code. So if I run the test again, would that work? Yeah, it does work. So I think that I solved. So that let's see if I also had. Let's say that I turn uh, right, so I'm going east, and I move two, but there's an obstacle there as well. So I just want to be like that. So basically, uh, obstacle uh, zero. Zero four um, and I would like a obstacle. No, that will be one zero. So this will be a two zero. And this one will be quite a few. So that will be a two zero and that will be this that will be this. Awesome, all working. So the obstacle stuff works. That's pretty awesome. There's no one, just one thing that I think that is too wrong because I think that they still need to display this zero thing when there's an obstacle. So basically, this test is not right. So basically, I think that what I need is this. No, it's not zero. This is an O. This is an O. That's what I would expect to happen. Okay, so now it won't. This will be interesting now. Because the next coordinate for this coordinate So I have a few options here. So I don't want to make these more complicated than, it, than what it is. 
So one way of doing this is if I ask the grid for the next coordinate and the grid says and the grid and then have the grid saying like I may have a new coordinate or not. So basically if I have a new coordinate it means that everything is okay and I can go to that coordinate. Otherwise if it says I don't have a coordinate, it's possibly because there is an obstacle. So if I changed this method in here to return an optional then what I would do here is different so in case of obstacles so if the new coordinate is an obstacle I would have an optional empty coming back Otherwise, I would have an optional of new coordinate. So if I do this, then what I could do, I could assign this to a variable. Um, I don't know, I don't have a good name for this right now. Let's put C. So, why is it? Oh yeah, okay, I chose, uh, so that's an optional. Let's put optional coordinate for now. I don't know, I don't have a better name for now. So we need to figure out what I'm doing still. What we could do, is say so if we pass so what we could do here is to say So if it's a, uh, how can I do that? That is not so shit. So basically I can say string obstacle and then I'll say OC. Um, now this will need to be, ah, obstacle. What if I do that? What if I, the decoration from assignment. So that is and now what I will do here is so uh obstacle string Obstacle is present, then add otherwise this. So here I could do the same. So what is it? Obstacle is present. Then it's coordinate. So it's present. Of initialize with optional empty. Uh, 
and then this would be like that. Wow, now I broke everything. And I think this is all rubbish. I think that I made a mistake. So this is not an obstacle. This is actually a new coordinate. So, or next coordinate, let's call it next coordinate. That's the next coordinate. So if the next coordinate is present, then I assign the next coordinate to the coordinate. So if the next coordinate is present, so how can I flip that? No, so I should flip that. So if the next coordinate is present, then return the space, otherwise it's an obstacle, right? So, let's see. So let me do something here. Okay, so oh, the rotation is failing now. That's interesting. Everything else is right, but the rotation is failing. Hmm. Yeah, I think that is because I'm initializing it in here and I shouldn't. So basically, what I need to have in there is this is this. This thing in here should be initialized as an empty. But this thing in here should be here only. So basically, I think that I could do this. Next coordinate is an optional of coordinate. That might fix. Right, that moves. Awesome. Okay, that's fixed everything. So, what if, is it possible to extract this? Yeah, so move. Okay, so that, that makes it much better. What is this crazy thing in here? So, this can, no. You know what I can do? This can be in line, this. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that's much better. Okay, so my, now I think, I think I'm done. Looks like I'm done. Okay, so we finally got there. Uh, took a while, but, but we got there. This is uh, um, this kind of uh, problems. They are a good fit for uh, to the classicists. So basically, when we know the inputs and we know the outputs, but we don't know how we're gonna build the thing uh, or how we're gonna build the solution. So this is a great example for 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 to the classicists. I've done outside in, or still classicists, but outside in. So not thinking about the internals, 
uh, always driving the whole thing through the public interface, that is the execute method of the rover class, passing string, return string. Basically what I was doing is small test after small test, starting with the rotation, rotate, rotate right, rotate left, and then move up, uh, and then the wrapping, and then moving things around, and then the obstacles. So basically small tests, small implementations, extract a few private methods. As I extract the private methods, I start moving them to, to different classes. So that's how the direction class was born. Uh, all this logic was inside the, the rover class. And then right after, I start fiddling with the position, so I create the coordinate class. And then as soon as you start implementing the move, I put the move logic inside the rover class, and then I started to move to the grid class, which was a very good call, because as soon as I got to the point where I had to uh, think about obstacles, I already had a grid class. Uh, it's also good to have a look at the, 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 how can I say, the specs, because like the grid word, so th there's quite a few places they mention grid, and when you when it, that's the case, it's always interesting to consider to have a, a class to represent that concept. And, and having that class representing the concept allowed me to, to solve the obstacles in a very easy way. So I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, I had fun. Um, so I always like doing these things, but it's, it's late. I'm tired, so I think it's time to go to bed. And I hope you like it. Uh, see you next time.